Mailed Mail Changeling Chainmail Exchange Written by Ragos How to Wear Your Changeling Scabbard Bloom grunted as she put more pressure onto the rag whilst polishing a particularly stubborn patch of tarnish on her armor. Having recently graduated into the ranks of the Royal Guard, she was expected to have it all spruced up and presentable for her duty the following week, which normally wouldn't be much of a problem for well-worn sets of armor hoofed down from their previous owners, but this particular set had been languishing in the Quartermaster's storage for so long that her cleaning could almost certainly be classified as a max distinction event for the rust mites living in it. Not that it was her fault or anything. She couldn't help being a bit on the skinny side for an earth pony, and there was no way she was going to serve in Pegasus armor. Too lightweight for frontline combat, and the empty wing holes would just look weird. Unfortunately, that also left her dragging home the only earth pony set that came in her size, in order to personally hammer the rusty plates back into shape. She sighed and leaned back into her couch, heedless of the sweat soaking through her coat and into the fabric. After glancing at the ticking grandfather clock, which showed ten minutes to noon, she silently bemoaned all the socializing she was missing on the account of an emergency maintenance. <sighs> okay, that's enough self-pity. She muttered as she dabbed the rag with another spot of polish. Time lost meaning as she went back to her work, eliminating one stain after another. Then the doorbell rang. Frowning, Scabby hopped off the couch and trotted towards the door, ignoring the pins and needles in her rump and hind legs as her body restored proper blood circulation. A wall-eyed Pegasus stallion beamed at her when she opened the door. Package for Miss Scabbard Bloom, he said. Scabby blinked as the stallion bounced an enormous parcel off his back and onto the doormat, where it produced a heavy, clinking thump when it landed. She stared at the postage sticker for several seconds, then turned to the mailman and frowned. Um, I didn't order this. Who's it from? The mailman checked his clipboard. Hmm, doesn't say. Scabby blinked. The mailman blinked as well, still smiling. So, uh... Maybe it's a secret of Myra. But that's just... Her words trailed off. Despite her concerns, she couldn't help but feeling a tiny upwelling of excitement at the prospect of opening it. The last time she'd gotten that feeling was at harsh warming before she left home for college, and that was long before guard training. It taunted her with hazy memories of sitting in front of a toasty fireplace, squealing as she and her siblings unwrapped their presents and then bragged about what they got. Scabby shook her head. Uh, you know what? Never mind. I'll take it. Worst case scenario, it wasn't meant for her, and she could always return it to the post office. They shouldn't have too much trouble returning it to the sender. After getting her to sign the papers, the mailman gave her a salute and flew off, humming a lively tune to himself. Scabby hauled the pulse onto her apartment, noting that it weighed almost as much as a full set of armor. Oddly enough, it also had several pencil-wide holes crudely punched into its sides, and she briefly wondered if there was supposed to be an animal inside. A quick sniff told her that there wasn't anything distinctly organic in there, though just a vaguely musty smell. She set it down on the floor in front of her couch and wasted no time in slashing through the ceiling tape with a blade. Every spare inch of space within was stuffed with crumpled newspaper, and her eyeballs shut up when digging out a few wads of them revealed gleaming metal, polished to a glorious golden sheen. It looked like a full scent, and of the same color as her designated uniform too, minus the part of being in dire need of a good touch-up. At first, she thought that the quartermaster had found a better suit and sent it to her, but she quickly dismissed the idea of a royal guard mailing uniforms to any pony. You went to the armory and collected your gear yourself. Every pony knew that. She didn't have any special connections with her superiors, and although she had a perfectly functional professional relationship with her peers, she couldn't exactly call them friends, certainly not to the point where they might send her a gift completely out of the blue. No letters or notes were to be found in the box, not after she'd emptied it, and certainly not with any of the crumpled balls of paper she bothered to straighten out. She felt her eyes drawn to the armor she'd placed on the coffee table. At first glance, it turned out just to be four hoof guards short of a full scent, but it still shamed her own armor with its pristine condition. However, on closer inspection, it also differed from the standard gear in its own construction. She realized that it offered better protection with the inclusion of upper leg guards. When she lifted up the helmet for inspection, other parts came up with it, it had straps and buckles linking separate plates in unusual places, 
and every one of them seemed to be built around a central cord, like a metal spine of short interlinked rods that ran from the base of the helmet, down under each neck place, through the saddle and down to the tail guard. No amount of fielding would separate them, and each segment of the spine looked like it was joined by the necks by a ball bearing and sock instead of screws and rivets. In spite of a tiny part of her brain warning her that something was suspiciously off about the whole thing, a larger part of her brain kept hitting her up about how good she would look in a brand new armor, as opposed to the old set she had been issued. Oh, why the heck not? Putting it on took a little bit of creative thinking, but after several minutes of twisting and turning, she managed to wriggle into it like it was a metal-plated onesie. After tightening the belly straps, she got up and did a brisk trot around her living room to get a feel for the weight. Her ears flattened a little bit when she felt some of the straps chafe against her hide. Many of the plates wobbled way too much for her liking. They didn't move with her so much as sway and jangle in delayed response to her movements, with their own separate momentum. She didn't have her full range of movement when she stretched and twisted, and some of the under padding wasn't touching her either. If she jumped or shook herself, she had no doubt that she would clink like a box of brass instruments. Scabby sucked in a breath through her teeth and sighed. Too big. Figures. But on a whim, she decided to trot another circle, and she blinked when she realized that the armor felt a lot snugger than before. The planes didn't clank and sway, the straps didn't chafe, and the bagging hugged her form properly, and on a third round the weight felt evenly and comfortably distributed across her whole body, almost like a second skin, rather than a janky collection of planes dangling from her hips and shoulders. Her head certainly didn't bounce around inside the helmet like a loose nut anymore. Hey, that's actually not bad. She murmured. Scabby stretched like a cat and contorted with every standard guard form in the training manual, marveling at the sudden inexplicable improvement in flexibility. She performed a couple of practice bucks and leapt over to the couch, tumbling into a roll upon landing before coming to a halt with a wide, battle-ready stance. She even followed up with some somersault for a good measure, landing perfectly balanced on all fours with a solid thump. Scabby whistled. Wow. Only a few of her peers were currently able to execute those moves flawlessly, and she'd never been one of them. Usually she'd stumbled upon landing or wobbled to the side when rolling, but the armor almost seemed to give her a supernatural sense of balance on top of its unusual flexibility. Had they enchanted the armor? Physical enchantments were expensive and rare, certainly not the kind of things to be spared for regular soldiers. At the very least, they must have done some kind of innate magic that allowed itself to self-adjust to fit her so perfectly. In comparison, the standard gear only came with cosmetic enchantments to make every pony's coats, manes, and tails match their respective regiments. She glanced down and peered at the blue star in the middle of the breastplate. It wasn't a gemstone, which would make such an enchantment even more expensive and unlikely. Heck, it didn't have the basic enchantment for changing her coat to the usual white or gray, though that shouldn't be too much of a problem since her colors were close enough to the approved shades for her unit. On the other half, she couldn't argue with its performance. She spent another couple of minutes going through the motions of a warm-up exercise before trotting to her room, where she stood before the mirror and struck a noble pose. Unlike the various oversized armor sets she'd had to put up with throughout her, admittedly still short, career, this one didn't make her look like a pony in a tin can. Rather, it accentuated her form, her musculature, her curves and lines, so that she looked more like a star in a play or a movie, or at least the hot sidekick for the hero to fawn over. She grinned as she admired her armored plot and gave herself a mock salute, Ooh, <laughs> looking good, Scabs. Hmm, <laughs> that's big fillies in armor. Only royalty, nobility, or high-ranking officers got to look this good in a uniform. And to top it all off, the thing breathed. Even with her sudden burst of strenuous activity, and top of all the cleaning she'd done prior to its delivery, she didn't feel particularly stuffy or sweaty under all the metal and padding. She could have sworn she even felt the air whisking away the dampness from her coat whenever she moved. No more risk of heat stroke for her. If this what perfectly fitting armor was supposed to feel like, she finally understood why some ponies like Iron Shell actually wanted to wear their armor even when off duty. But seriously, though, who sent this? Because if she was the intended recipient, she really owed some pony a long heartfelt thank you, in addition to finding out if they had any strings attached. She certainly couldn't see any pony giving away something so precious for free. She began trotting back towards the living room to conduct another search for her sender's note, but paused at the doorframe when she heard some faint rustling. Glancing downward, Scabby saw a folded piece of paper flutter to the floor. Frowning, she patted her breastplate and peered at the gaps in her armor from different angles in search of a hidden compartment, but no such thing presented itself. 
her best guess that it might have slipped out from between the plating and padding, unless it came with a dimensional pocket too. She shook her head and picked up the piece of paper. Unfolding it revealed an inky writing so neat she almost mistook it for print. It read, Greetings Royal Guard. You have been selected as a highly qualified candidate for field testing of the latest innovation in equestrian protective attire, Changeling Chainmail. This state-of-art armor boasts all of the defensive capabilities of standard Royal Guard equipment, but with the added benefit of being able to automatically adjust itself to fit you perfectly, anytime, anywhere. Even if you had an unusually large meal, got a butt in the oven, or undergot an unexpected growth spurt, Changeling Chainmail is still capable of giving you optimal protection, comfort, and mobility. Changeling Chainmail is also capable of memorizing the personal economics of multiple users, so it can be repeatedly loaned out to protect other users or VIPs in a pinch. On the other half, if you have concerns about security, Changeling Chainmail can be instructed to firmly reject any user other than yourself. Simply issue the command, Bug for One, while swearing it to designate yourself as the sole authorized user. Bug for All removes this restriction. No party shall be held liable for any injuries resulting in repeated unauthorized attempts to use Changeling Chainmail. Changeling Chainmail also requires minimal maintenance, as it is 100% rust-proof and mildew-proof. No more polishing, no more oiling, and no more worrying about water damage. Simply rinse and keep in a reasonably ventilated space, and it is good to go. And best of all, it is capable of self-repair within 24 hours when fully charged. All you need to do in order to keep your Changeling Chainmail at peak power and efficiency is to cherish it, whether like a foal's favorite toy, or a professional's most trusted tool, or an ancient family heirloom, it is completely up to you. Changeling Chainmail is capable of possessing nearly all forms of positive, possessive affection in order to regenerate and power itself for a lifetime. We hope that your deployment of this product will be a mutually satisfying experience. Happy guarding, and remember, your armor is your friend. Scabby simply stared at the note with her mouth half open. Hey? What? Hey. She eventually muttered as she trotted back into the living room. First, she upended the box and trawled through the paper scraps, but found nothing else of significance that might clue her in on who sent her the armor or why. No notes or scrawled messages that she'd missed, not even on the inside of the box or underneath it. She glanced at the pamphlet in her hoof and murmured, Changeling. Chainmail? Had the blacksmiths adopted changeling apprentices and somehow discovered a way to imbue their creations with shape-shifting magic? Or had the old wizards at Celestia's School for Gifted Unicorns collaborated with their new changeling allies to come up with new ways to enchant equipment? Both seemed plausible, if a bit improbable, because the higher-ups surely would have gotten wind of such undertakings when it concerned martial applications. Not that a grunt like her was privy to military secrets, but such things had a tendency to dribble down the ranks in Canterlot. At the very least, there would have been rumors especially if their former enemies were involved. Scabby kicked a crumpled ball of paper aside and plopped into the couch. Maybe she was looking at it all wrong. Instead, maybe the changelings had sent it to her and... Scabby blinked. Could a changeling transform into armor? It sounded like the kind of nonsense that Bulwark might spout when he had too much to drink, or something the older guys might whisper to recruits as part of their hazing schemes. The officers had not once mentioned such a fine degree of shapeshifting from their experiences at the invasion of the Royal Winding, but still... Oh, sweet Celestia! Am I inside a changeling? Then, Scabby squeaked in a definitely not full like way when she felt one of the straps tighten across her belly. Uh, uh, horse apples! She'd seen enough horror movies to know that death by strangulation was one of the commonest and nastiest ways to go. A cold sweat broke out through her hide as she clawed at the buckles to unfasten them, and her spine conducted the chill all the way from her mane to her tailbone as she squirmed and wriggled her way at the straps. She bit back a whimper when she glimpsed nightmarish visions of the plate twisting and bowing in to crush her like a rabbit in the jaws of a wolf, and she could have sworn she heard slurping and the wit smacking of lips as she undid the last strap and peeled the armor off of her. Once free, she kicked it to the floor and curled her tail around herself while she waited on the couch for the shivers to pass. Then, after a full minute of just staring at the inert pile of metal on the floor, Scabby felt her cheeks heat up and groaned when her brain finally decided to start working again. It was all a prank. It had to be. A talented unicorn could briefly enchant armor to mold itself to her form, just long enough for her to get a little all excited about it, and then freak out once it started poking or squeezing her. Scabby got up, stomped to the window, and yanked the curtains aside, 
fully expecting to find a group of her fellow guards huddled outside, snickering and giggling at her expense. <laughs> Very funny, guys! She growled as she lifted the window pane and poked her head out. But instead of finding the culprits, she only saw a sunny cobblestone street outside her apartment unit. Birds sang in trees looming over the sidewalk, while ponies went around their leisurely business. Neither pranksters nor oversized bugs lurked in the hedges or the flower patches. Okay, so we're back to square one. She rolled back around and gave the armor her most menacing scowl. It didn't react. <sighs> Fine. She approached it, cautiously at first, but with increasing speed and force, as her disgraceful loss of composure replayed over and over in her mind. Scabby stomped on the breastplate. Hard. Nothing. She then grabbed her hammer, the one she used to bang dents out of her own armor, and brought it down onto the helmet. The resonant clang jarred her teeth, but aside from minor scuff on the helmet's polished surface, the changeling's chainmail gave no indication that it was made of anything more than an admittedly well-made set of armor. A brief pang of dread coiled around her heart as the thought of what the drill sergeant would say upon witnessing such mistreatment of gear, but she bowled through the reflex of fear and gave it a few more whacks. When those also failed to convince her one way or another, she dropped the hammer and scalped the armor. Stay right there. I'll be back. After a quick trip to the basement, she came back up with a rusty sledgehammer which the unit's previous owner had left behind in storage. A little big for a mare her size, but being an earth pony came with certain advantages. Scabby grinned at the armor as she hefted the sledgehammer with her forelegs and brandished it experimentally. She didn't know what it might have been used for once, but by Celestia's sunny smiley butt, she knew exactly what purpose it would serve today. She then reared up on her hind legs and held the sledgehammer high above her head, ready to bring down a thunder, when a little glint caught her eye and gave her pause. Did... did the helmet just shed a bead of sweat? I knew it! She swung it down with all her might, and just before the blow landed, a brilliant flash of green light obliterated the world from her sight, filling her stinging eyes with dancing afterimages and flickering spots of black and white. Floorboards crunched, the apartment shook and dust cascaded from the ceiling in the aftermath of the bone-jarring impact. Crabby Hayseed, are you bucking insane? Someone cried in a high-pitched voice. Scabby yelped and tried to raise the hammer for another swing, but the floor only creaked in protest and refused to relinquish the heavy metal head buried in the splintered boards. Stupid thing. With a snort, she gave the sledgehammer's shaft a parting whack with her hoof and leapt backwards to put some distance between herself and the threat. She kept a low and wide stance, ready to shift her balance on a moment's notice while she waited for the afterimages to clear from her eyes. When her vision recovered, she saw a dark figure sitting on its rump with its back pressed up against the couch, clutching its chest with a hoof as it panted. Its entire body was covered in what looked like hard, semi-glossy, charcoal-gray plating, with lighter bands of gray around its midriff. It also had a curved horn, a fur-like mane, holes in its legs and wings, and eyes that were a solid shade of aquamarine. It took Scabby a moment to process the sight, but once she did, the conclusion was inescapable. She had an evil changeling in her house. She jabbed her hoof in this direction and growled. You! You're under arrest for- Me? It cried indignantly with a stallion's voice, it then jabbed a hoof back on her. You're the one who would have been charged with mare slaughter if I didn't have such good reflexes. B what? Scabby blinked and shook her head. Bull! You broke into my house! Actually, you brought me in. On false pretenses. That's still a crime! She snapped. He raised the hoof and opened his mouth, stalled for a couple of seconds then slowly lowered his foreleg. An awkward grin then worked its way onto his muzzle. Uh, you know what? I think we started off on the wrong hoof. Let's try that again. Before Scabby could protest, he clambered right into the couch and planted his butt comfortably on her cushions. Hi, I'm Spinkter, and I'm a changeling. He waved at her, buzzed his wings for a second and beamed. Nice to meet you. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't get to act as if we just bumped into each other by accident. She growled as she stomped towards him. His ears pinned back as he held his forelegs up. And now, wait a minute. Let's just talk about this. Uh, get out of my house! Scabby cried as she leapt at him. Spinkter yelped and vaulted over the couch's backrest, but she crashed into him before he could make use of his wings, and they both tumbled over to the other side. 
Upon crashing to the floor, Scabby pounced on him with a snarl. He was bigger than her, but she had an earth pony strength on her side, and that counted for a lot once you were grappling with an opponent. Ouch! Not the face! Not the face! He cried as he tried to scurry away. They wrestled and tussled about, bumping into furniture and scattering crumpled newspaper balls in their wake. Scabby banged her head against the coffee table and her back against the couch a couple of times, but she eventually managed to lay flat with her full weight on top of his back, pinning his wings under her barrel in the process. But before she could put him in a headlock, he craned his neck around and flared his horn. Scabby's world winked out for a moment, and she felt herself tumbling head over hooves. A moment later, her vision cleared, followed by some mild throbbing in her forehead. Stupid stun spell. Had she been Pegasus or a unicorn, it might have dropped her for a minute or two instead of just a couple of seconds. She glanced around, fully expecting to find her door busted or a smashed window, but everything looked mostly intact. And then she looked up. Spinkter was upside down, clinging to the ceiling like some obscenely huge spider. He was well out of her reach, and she didn't fancy the idea of throwing stuff to knock him down. She just fixed the ceiling last month, and the sledgehammer sticking out of the floorboards was already an ugly herald of repair bills on the horizon. Scabby glared at him and flickered her tail. <sighs> Come down. Um. He glanced at the sledgehammer stuck in the floor and winced as he rubbed his shoulder. I think I'm going to pass on that, thanks. They stared at each other in silence. Then they both flinched when they heard some harsh rapping of some pony's hoof on the door. Oh, Miss Scabbard, is everything all right? That was quite a ruckus back there. I was wondering if you were okay. Great. Wonderful. The neighbors had noticed after all. Scabby ground her teeth. She could try calling for help, but then again, civilians might not make such a difference in this situation. At best, a mob might convince Sphincter to finally get lost, but only if a couple of ponies came to her aid. He might find himself a useful hostage to push through whatever shady scheme he had in mind. I'm okay. She called out without taking her eye off Spinkter. It was a really big nasty spider. It's gone now. Oh, well, okay then. You take care now. The shadow beneath the door gap vanished, but they both maintained their silence, listening to the fading host steps. Eventually, Spinkter murmured, mm, Thanks. I didn't do it for you. She snapped. Regardless, I appreciate it. Scabby narrowed her eyes. Uh-huh. I'm sure you do. He opened his mouth, then slowly closed it, tears drooping as he did so. The silence returned. Then, after a couple more false starts, he sighed and murmured. <sighs> Look, I'm sorry I came into your house under false pretenses and gave you a scare. I... I really mean you no harm. I just wanted to show you something I came up with that could benefit both of us. <laughs> Lightly story. It's true. Sphincter cried, buzzing his wings. He then wilted a bit and sighed. <sighs> but I guess I can't blame you for not believing me. Ugh, darn right you can't. Scabby growled. She then gestured at him with a huff and continued. I mean... You still have that black carapace and cheese legs going on. What's up with that? I thought changelings have reformed. Oh, that. He muttered, suddenly baring his teeth, though it didn't look like his ire was directed at her. Well, I guess you didn't get the memo. Scabby bit her lip. Now that she had time for her heart rate to drop back to normal, she couldn't help but noticing the grotesque holes in his legs. They reminded her of grub riveled logs rotting on the forest floor, sending an involuntary shiver down her spine as she imagined what it would feel like to have all manner of creepy crawlies going in and out of her body. Changeling anatomy and physiology had become mandatory reading for the guard ever since the Canterlot invasion. Every pony knew that they fed in emotions, but her memory on the finer prints of their life cycle was a little hazy after her graduation. She ground her teeth. He was probably going to sense the opening and milk it for all it's worth, but with Princess Twilight on the throne and her new guidelines on interspecies relations, it would probably look just as bad for her if he dropped dead from starvation as they're visiting her house. Worse still, the reformed changelings were supposedly friends of Equestria now. Did he count as one of their citizens? If their king got word that she mistreated one of his kin, 
Even if Spectre started it by trespassing and posing as inanimate military equipment, she'd be stuck right in the middle of a diplomatic incident. She sucked in a deep breath and sighed. <sighs> How bad is it? What? Are you starving? She cast a glance back at the overturned box and balls of crumpled newspapers strewn about, then turned back at the peer at the holes in his limbs. I mean, that's why you pulled the stunt, isn't it? Can I get you anything? He blinked. I... I'm as fine as organic nourishment is concerned. Thanks. But love on the other half... My metaphysical stomach is shriveling up like an old tea bag. If I don't get a decent meal soon, I'll slowly go feral and eventually hurt some pony. Yikes. So... He grinned sheepishly. Does this mean you're willing to give me another chance and hear me out? Scabby creased her bow and gave him a single nod. As soon as she saw his teal eyes sparkle, she held a hoof to forestall the coming tide of thanks and flattery he might employ to further wear down her guard. She knew that look. It was the kind of look that eventually led to parents housing every stray animal in the neighborhood. If she wasn't careful, she might even end up with a housemate. <sighs> Let's be clear about one thing. I'm willing to help you if I can. But as far as you being my guest is concerned, you're on probation. If you try any more funny business without my permission, I'm kicking your flank out of my house. She stomped, a hoof to emphasize the point. Got it. He nodded. Crystal clear. So I... Ah, ah, ah. Scabby held up her hoof again. Before we get into that... Could you please get off the ceiling? Done. He suddenly dropped from the ceiling like a depowered magnet and did a neat little flip to right himself, buzzing his wings to hover a couple of feet off the floor. His eyes then drifted over to the couch and lingered for a moment, which he then turned back to her with an unspoken request. She rolled her eyes and plodded towards the kitchen. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Make yourself comfortable. There we go. Just the end of part one. Part two will be releasing hopefully in the next mm, one or two days. It depends how long it takes to edit. That's really the major factor here. A big thank you to Lotus Moon for, you know, lending me her voice. She sounds fantastic. And I thank her for joining me in this little collaboration. That aside, however, I would like to thank my wonderful Patreons. Thank you, my tier one Patreons. Squall Windfeather, Rain Flicker, Starlight Blaze, Dreamless Portal, Stew Hex, and Thine Tiny Equine. My Tier 2 Patreons Chase Lemaster, Sword Brother and Mordred, Solus, Captain Blue Shadow, HKH4 AK Texture, and The Animated Ghost. And a big thank you to Silent Titan. And also, thank you for joining my Patreon RD Bryant. Thank you so much for your support, man. I appreciate it a ton. That aside, however, Consider liking, subscribing, and of course, commenting down below. I appreciate it a ton, and also go check out Lotus Moon. I'll be leaving her channel down in the comments down below for you to check out. Her voice is wonderful, she's got a great channel, and she releases content on a relatively daily basis. If you heard of me, you've definitely heard of her. That aside, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Firehearth. Have a wonderful day.